board, urging it to keep the question from appearing on the ballot. Now, regardless. So they're trying to keep that question of abortion off the ballot. Shouldn't the people decide? See how they are? See, the thing is that they say they're all for democracy. And I'm not just talking about the Republicans. I'm talking about Democrats, too. When they, they say that they're all for democracy, but then when it actually comes time for us to democratically decide on something, then they're like, not like that. You can't. You, it's We want you to have democracy, but we don't want you to choose. Give us the choice, not you. Hunty, this is why the power of doing ballot initiatives is so dangerous to both parties because they don't like it. When I say the words democracy, what does that mean to you? What does the actual definition of democracy mean? Well, with ultimately just mean people power, right? Power of the people wielded by the people. But as a story that I recently have seen shows that there are certain people, and in this particular case, the Florida Republicans, Florida GOP, they want to take your democratic say away or just make it harder to pass anything that the people actually want. Let's take a look at this. Let me share my screen. So this is out of the Orlando Weekly. It says Florida Republicans seek to again, to make it harder for voters to amend the state constitution. The idea is backed by the Chamber of Commerce, which doesn't love that people have voted to increase Florida's minimum wage. Hmm. Let's go. It says, Florida Representative Rick Roth, not Rick Ross, Rick Roth, says a Republican from West Palm Beach, It's once again trying to raise the bar for voters to approve constitutional amendments from 60% to 66.67% of support and in an effort to make it harder for such ballot initiatives to pass. The proposal HJR 335 was advanced by the Republican dominated House Ethics, Elections and Open Government Subcommittee Monday through an 11 to 6 vote. Despite opposition voiced by half a dozen people during public testimony, another dozen, and then some, waived the opposition. Roth has proposed the idea during previous legislative sessions, but it has never garnered the amount of support needed from the GOP-controlled legislator in order to pass. Even if it did, the proposal would ultimately need to go on the 2024 ballot for final approval from... Voters. So, in order to take our power away, we have to approve of our power being taken away. Interesting, right? They're trying to make it seem like, well, you guys just, more of you guys just need to approve. And it's like, well, if 60%, that is a technically a super majority. Because a majority is 50 plus 1. So 60% is super majority, but they're now trying to make it 60.67%, hmm. which makes it more difficult. Says the idea is backed by the Florida Chamber of Commerce, a front group for the big business lobby, which doesn't love that people have voted to increase Florida's minimum wage, not just once in 2004, but twice also in 2020. The chamber backed a similar proposal in 2006 to raise the bar to 60%. The group behind the push, protect our constitution was bankrolled by industry groups like Florida Association of Realtors, which donated $100,000 to the effort and Publix supermarket, which similarly tossed over its own $100,000 contribution according to campaign's finance records. Ironically, 
just under 58% of Floridians voted to approve that 2006 ballot initiative, meaning it would have passed it if it wouldn't have passed it if it were put to a vote after the bar was already raised. Citizens and advocacy groups have historically used the ballot initiative process to pass a number of progressive amendments to the state constitution in lieu of action by state legislators, including an initiative to legalize medical marijuana back in 2016 and to raise the Florida state minimum wage. I remember in 2020 voting to raise the state minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. And the crazy part is, this is considered a red state, and yet we're raising the minimum wage. Why? Because when you go truly issue for issue, when it comes to voters, we actually want more. And the more that we want is for us to have our material needs and conditions met. That's just how we are. Then later this year in November, voters may also have their say on whether to limit governmental interference in abortion and legalize abortion up to roughly 24 weeks of pregnancy. During the proposal's first committee stop on Monday, Ross said he can't think of a better way to protect our constitution than to raise the bar but opponents believe it demonstrates lack of trust in voters. So why, uh, hold up. So why, if you believe in democracy, then why not believe in direct democracy and let voters be able to choose what we want for ourselves? This just says to me that Mr. Roth automatically thinks that, well, we don't know what we want that we don't know what's good for us. So people like him need to tell us what's good for us and treat us like petulant children. When in reality, it's like, no, here's my thing. If we're petulant children, why in the world, then what does that mean for you being in office? That means if we're petulant children don't, that don't know what the hell we're doing, that means that you shouldn't be in office because who voted for you? Wouldn't it be the petulant children that you want to take that choice away from or limit the choice even more? You just want the power in your hands to dictate to us what we want. When in reality, shouldn't that be the reverse, Mr. Roth? Shouldn't it be that we tell you what we want? And yet you want that power to be in your hands, when in reality, it should be in our hands. Why? Because we are the bosses. But you don't believe in that, do you, Mr. Roth? And you will take, you will take whatever maneuvers you can, you and your party, whatever maneuvers you can, whether it's through redlining, whether it's through voter suppression, and don't get me wrong, the Democrats do it too. Case in point, they basically canceled the primary and basically gave Florida to Joe Biden. You and the Democrats are just are the same. You and the Democrats do not give a crap about us and our actual voices. This is why this right here is a power grab. Because if we suddenly go, well, we want to expand our free speech rights. We don't think that the laws that were passed and signed over by DeSantis to limit, you know, how we can demonstrate and protest. No, we actually think that that should be repealed. So let's say we want to repeal it. Guess what? The people's word is law. But you guys don't like that. Back in 2018, what did we as voters do? We gave formerly incarcerated people the right to vote again. But what did y'all do? Y'all paywalled their voice, making it so, oh, would you have to pay 
the court fees and the fines and all these different things back just so that you can get that right to vote again. So you paywalled their right to vote? That's not democracy. You shouldn't have to pay to vote. But that's what you did. Even though we gave them the right to vote back. Democratically, you said, nope. That's what y'all did. Orlando area, U.S. Congressman Maxwell Frost quipped on X, the social, uh, formerly Twitter, says the Florida House Republican theory of change, if you can't win over the voters, then screw over the voters. That's what Maxwell Frost said. Says voters in Ohio shut down a similar effort backed by industry groups and anti-abortion organizations last year, which would have raised the state's bar from over 50% to 60% of support needed for ballot initiatives to pass. According to campaign finance records, some of the biggest donors to protect the Constitution Political Committee spearheading efforts of the included, oh, I'm sorry, spearheading effort there included anti-abortion groups, the American Policy Coalition, which is a conservative dark money group, a billionaire Richard uh, Uhlein, a major donor to, donor to the Florida-based Foundation for Government Accountability, which has pushed a rollback child labor laws in Florida and across the country. So, the same people who want to push back child labor laws, who want your kids to work for these corporations, which these corporations are going to stiff these kids who are working for them so that they can pay them lower. They want to repeal those laws to make it easier to have little Timmy working in a factory. They want to do that, but they also want to make it so that your voice is stifled. <laughs> Since the proposed resolution in Florida to raise the bar for ballot initiatives it still needs to clear several more hurdles before it can be placed on the ballot in 2024. So that is what's going on. And I, I can't help but to think that really, if the Democrats really want to make this a true battle. I would be in front of the cameras like crazy right now. Like this would be one of my biggest things. But I'm glad that we as voters actually have the ability to vote for this and say, yeah, no. But I'm going to share this as well because i think this is also important so let's go here let's take a look take it away willie among nine states where abortion protections could be on the ballot next year in the form of a constitutional amendment. NBC News correspondent Morgan Radford joins us with a look at how this fight is shaping up. And it sounds like it's not just Democrats, but Republicans pushing to get these on the ballot. You've got it, Willie. It's really interesting because at issue is a constitutional amendment that would protect abortion rights up to 24 weeks. And similar measures have been successful in Kansas and Ohio. And it's all part of a broader effort to put abortion rights directly before voters at the state level. But in order to get this language on the ballot, supporters need to gather almost 900,000 signatures by February 1st. And although this is a popular position among Democrats, as you mentioned, they say they're also getting help from across the political spectrum. 
Thank you for signing. Good afternoon. At festivals, farmers markets, even the beach, volunteers here in Florida are fanning out. Bringing the petition to mahjong parties and pool parties. Trying to get one issue on the 2024 ballot, a constitutional amendment that would bar any restrictions on abortion before viability around the 24th week of pregnancy or when necessary to protect the patient's health. I don't think there's any doubt that when this thing is on the ballot, that it will pass. Anna Hokemer leads the Florida Women's Freedom Coalition, one of several groups behind the movement from right here in her South Florida home, a coalition that she says doesn't just include Democrats. By her organization's count, of the 1.3 million signatures they've collected thus far, more than 150,000 have come from registered Republicans. I had one woman. Does that surprise you? Does that shock you that a chunk of Republicans also believe in, uh, some of them believe in limited access to abortions, but they still say, okay. For me, it was like, huh? Oh, okay. That's how I felt. It's like, all right. How many of you guys were surprised about that? Anybody? <laughs> All right, let's continue. And say to me, you know, I was in a room full of Republican women when we heard that Roe v. Way was overturned. And it was like being at a funeral. They'd all been through this battle before. They thought it was settled. Are you both registered Republicans? Yes. Yes. Okay. And there are voices behind those numbers. Carol Whitmore was introduced to us by the Florida Women's Freedom Coalition. To say that women can't make this very important decision in their life is atrocious. So you will be surprised and you will hear there are a lot of Republicans that support what Jamie and I do. Her friend, Jamie Carter, is unaffiliated with the organization, but has signed a petition in favor of the amendment. You know, there's a, a lot of people that you wouldn't think would be the pro-choice um, advocates, but they are. And I think it's really just having control of our own bodies. That's in it. The pandemic woke up a lot of people especially who consider themselves to be Republicans. Why? Because a lot of people said, mm, we want to have control over our own bodies. And some people who are Republicans, they felt this way all the whole time. They weren't awakened to this. And some of them are probably, you know, already had this thought, already had this idea, this opinion before the pandemic, but some probably came to this conclusion post pandemic. The ability to have a choice over your own bodies. So not all Republicans would be on board to keep abortion so, so restrictive. But this just goes to show where if it is in the hands of the people, then guess what happens? The people say what they want, how they want their state to be ran, not the politicians. I think that's important. Let's continue. Take it away, lady in the striped shirt having control of our own bodies that's and the government overreach is huge right now mm -hmm. what do you all think happens if the republican party as a whole doesn't see this issue the way that you do i think the national level they're realizing they're not going to win this battle and it's not just women former state representative carlos la casa and ed williamson a prominent local businessman are also donating time and money to the petition cause both are registered republicans why do you think it's important that you speak out as men on this issue? I expect my privacy rights to be respected by the government. I don't want to be forced to be vaccinated. And that for that reason, I think that a woman's right to choose is fundamental and should be defended. Carlos is right. And uh, of course, 
the right to an abortion, I think, is one of those things that the government's got no business uh, being into. Nationally, they're not alone. Recent Gallup polls show just 24 percent of Republicans believe abortion should be illegal in all cases. But in a state where Republican Governor Ron DeSantis won re-election by nearly 20 percentage points. Oh, that poor child. Oh, gosh. Uh. Poor baby. Then signed legislation that would ban most abortion after six weeks. Political experts we spoke to said the measure is not guaranteed. By the way, just for especially a lot of uh, those of us who are men, cisgender men in here and who may be watching, a lot of women do not know that they're pregnant until after six weeks. Just to let you know. So that whole like, oh, you had six weeks. It's not like after, it's not like after you had, you know, conception happens, you suddenly realize it and feel it. And it's like, oh, oh, I think the egg in me just got fertilized. Oh my God, I think I'm pregnant. They, 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 they don't know all that just yet. Like, <laughs> some of them don't know till, till they miss that next period. And it could be a whole month before that. It could be four weeks, 28 days, maybe more. And then it's like, oh, man, my period was supposed to come last week and it didn't come. And then a week and a half, guess what? It's like, oh, I think I missed it. Then they go, oh, well, let me go take a pregnancy test. And then by the time they take a pregnancy test, if they feel like they need to get an abortion, guess what? They can't because it's been six weeks already. This is why it's very important for us as men to actually learn this shit. So that, and then on top of it, mm, maybe we have to sit this choice out. Sit it out. <laughs> It's just like, what if a group of women passed a law saying that we should all mandatory that we all, that we all get vasectomies or we can't get one. Isn't that an invasion of our own bodies? Because I mean, wouldn't sperm be a living being within our body too? I mean, it is live. It's just saying. But that's neither here nor there. So it's about government overreach, right? So if it makes it harder for us to be able to pass laws as a majority then wouldn't that also be government overreach? Why in the world would we give more hands, more power over to the government when reality, it should be more in the power, it should be more in the hands of us as the people. So raising the threshold from 60% to 66.7% just puts it more in the hands of the Florida legislator, it'll be the Florida House, the Florida Senate, and in Ron DeSantis' hands. I'm gonna say it like Captain America said in Civil War: the safest hands are still our own. We're gonna get a substantial support across party line for this kind of amendment. We've seen that even in states that are that are more Republican than Florida is. The big caveat, though, uh, especially here in Florida, is that the threshold for constitutional amendment in Florida is 60 percent. And that's a that's a difficult threshold on any issue, let alone one that can be quite as divisive as the abortion issue. This is something that a lot of people don't talk about, but they know how they're going to vote. And when you get behind that uh, booth and do your thing, um, we're going to speak up for ourselves.
We reached out to the Republican Party of Florida multiple times via phone and via email, and they have yet to respond to our request for comment. The state's Republican Attorney General, Ashley Moody, has filed a brief with the state Supreme Court, urging it to keep the question from appearing on the ballot. Now, regardless of how many signatures... Wait, she sped through that real fast. He wants to keep it off the ballot? Hang on. Supreme Court, urging it to keep the question from appearing urging it to keep the question from appearing on the ballot. Now, regardless. So they're trying to keep that question of abortion off the ballot. Shouldn't the people decide? See how they are? See, the thing is that they say they're all for democracy. And I'm not just talking about the Republicans. I'm talking about Democrats, too. When they, they say that they're all for democracy, but then when it actually comes time for us to democratically decide on something, then they're like, not like that. You can't, you, it's, we want you to have democracy, but we don't want you to choose. Give us the choice, not you. Hunty of how many signatures are in fact collected. And as for that six-week abortion ban, it's still on hold pending a state Supreme Court decision on Florida's current 15-week ban, which went into effect in 2022. But no matter the outcome, if this ballot measure were to pass in 2024, then both laws would be automatically invalidated. This is why the power of doing ballot initiatives is so dangerous to both parties because they don't like it. So I'm going to go to this article that Roger Meadows sent to me. Let's just take a look at that really quick before we continue. All right. So thank you very much for this, Roger. It says breaking the ballot. Republican state lawmakers are enthusiastic practitioners of direct democracy backsliding. Can voters hold them off? As in Arkansas, Republican state lawmakers have started going after the most dangerous political opponents, their own voters. They can't quite comprehend why voters deliver wins on controversial ballot measures like legalizing medical marijuana and implementing graduated minimum wage. Some of the poorest Americans now earn some of the highest minimum wage rates in the South at $11 per hour after voting by staggering margin almost six years ago to give themselves a pay hike. But with overwhelming majorities in both chambers of the General Assembly, Republicans decided to opt out of consent of the government. Two years ago, they put a constitutional amendment on the ballot asking voters to participate in their own collective, the, uh, sorry, Defenestration by increasing the threshold for passing constitutional amendments, initiated acts and referendums to a supermajority of 60%. They had tried and failed before in 2020. The people voted not just no, but hell no, by nearly 20 percentage points, which translates to Republicans, not just Democrats or independents, rejecting the gambit in this GOP trifecta state. No matter last March, they passed legislation to require ballot campaigns to collect tens of thousands of signatures from at least 50 of the state's 75 counties, more, 35 more than the previous threshold and five more than the 2020 constitutional amendment had proposed. Republican government, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders promptly signed it. it says recruiting uh, enough people to collect the necessary signatures from registered voters in a state that has some of the lowest voter turnout and registration rates in, in normal elections, I'm sorry, national election was a monumental challenge even before Republican lawmakers changed the rules. In Arkansas, canvassers cannot be paid per signature and must be both citizens and state residents and must pass a criminal background check. They are hell bent on making it more difficult for citizens to put any kind of measure before voters. Woo! So, yeah, this is what's happening all over and this is why it's important to pay attention to the ballot initiatives that are being proposed within the state
Because the problem is, is that they constantly do not want you to have that power within your hands. Because they know, they know that you're going to go the opposite direction of corporations. These politicians, they are at the behest of corporations. And so, for instance, like when we passed the $15 an hour minimum wage here in Florida, the corporations hated us for that. But what could they do? Absolutely nothing. Huh. Because when we said, no, nah, you guys are going to pay us more per hour, they had no choice. So the only way that they can take that away is by saying, okay, make it more difficult for you guys to be able to raise the minimum wage. But they literally have to ask us to make our choice more difficult. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to say hell no. Because ultimately, the safest hands are still our own. And this is why it is so important for us to pay attention to ballot initiatives that are going on, that are going on our ballot in election years, whether it's this year or in 2026, because we have to also have to pay attention during off election, off national election years, because it may happen then too, where they may sneak something under the radar. And this isn't just limited to Republicans, this is also Democrats too, because they are also in bed with the corporations. So this is why it's important. So now this year, one of the most famous ones is a ballot that allows abortions up to 24 weeks, right? Which means that you're essentially getting government out of the way of choices of your own body. Right? That's basically what it means. But then, what if it's making it so that private equity can no longer buy up housing? What if we make a ballot initiative where private equity can no longer make money off health care? or food. How would that affect us? Well, it would affect us in a very positive way because we wouldn't see this price gouging that constantly happens to all of us because they're ultimately the ones that are price gouging us. And a lot of these firms, a lot of these investment firms like Vanguard, BlackRock and State Street, they're the ones who are constantly pushing for these prices to go up. They're making record profits, people. It's not like they're suffering. They're making record profits off of our backs. So what do we do? We ban them. But it's harder to do when you raise that threshold, which is what they're using their politicians to do. But they can only do it through us. So, even if you don't believe in voting for any politician, that's fine. Okay. If you want to sit out the election when it comes to voting for politicians, okay. But be mindful of the ballot initiatives. Even if you don't vote for anybody in particular, look at those ballot initiatives because they will affect your life immediately. Of course, we want a revolution in this country in order to change things so that our material conditions are better. Voting for ballot initiatives that actually favor us as a people can mitigate some of the harm that's being done to us by the corporate powers that are puppeting our politicians. So this is the reason why I have focus on this, because we're mitigating the damage done to us. Mitigating the damage that's done to our unhoused 
neighbors. Mitigating the damage that's done to people who are disabled. Mitigating the damage that's done to those of us who earn a paycheck, who are housing insecure. Mitigating the damage done to us when it comes to our digital rights. This is why paying attention to ballot initiatives is, is so important. And then on top of that, you can also get some wins because some of these wins can also make it easier for those of us who haven't been, our eyes been open, where we can see, wait, hey, the state can do this? What more can the state do for us? Maybe we can do, maybe we can do a public bank. Maybe, just maybe, we can do something that incre makes it so that kids don't have to pay for lunch at school anymore on a statewide level. Here in Orange County, Florida, our kids don't pay for lunch. They passed that back in June of 2023. So for the rest of this year, at least, if you're if you don't make that much, or if you're in the in between, in that gap, you don't have to pay for lunch. Even kids that are well to do, they don't have to pay for lunch. Nobody has to. It's all paid through for through taxation. Meaning all the kids get to eat. Nobody's left out. What if we can do that for healthcare on a statewide level? What if we can do that for housing? What if we could legalize psilocybin? What if we can legalize cannabis so that it gives police less power to put us into those modern day plantations that we call prison? Pay attention to ballot initiatives, okay? That's what's important. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.